I make my clients laugh by flat out saying diet trials are a pain in the bottom. Um, one of my little tricks is I actually do a lot of talking to the, the client when it comes to doing a diet trial. You know, it's not something you can just say, hey, buy this bag of food or go home, prepare this diet, come back in eight weeks, tell me about it, you're pretty much going to guarantee failure. Um, so I will literally tell clients, look at your hands. If it's not a piece of kangaroo or it's not a piece of oat or whatever the two ingredients I'm using, don't get defeated. And I think they've got it. I see that, you know, the cogs are turning in their brain. And I had one client, I'm walking out the door. She's like, oh, my husband just caught a bunch of fish. I can feed that, right? And I'm like, is that in your hand? And I literally said that to the client and my technician was laughing at me, but it kind of helps. They're like, oh, kangaroo, oat. Oh. Um, so the idea of a diet trial is if a, if a pet has any symptoms that I think are related to a food allergy, I'm going to get a strict diet history. And so what have they eaten? Treats, rawhides, flavored medications, the nitty nitty gritty, um, supplements. A lot of times when I ask what medications is a, is a pet on, owners forget the supplements that they're choosing to feed. You know, they'll think of what are they prescribed, but they won't say, oh yeah, and this vitamin or this capsule. So we get that full history. What foods have they been on? And then I essentially choose something new. Um, so if every dog in America grew up eating kangaroo and oat, I would have them feed lamb and rice. So there's nothing magical about kangaroo or rabbit or quinoa or these different things. It's just something they've never had before. So the idea of a novel protein and carbohydrate, limited preservatives, limited fillers. And so for a period of six to eight weeks, they're basically only going to eat that food or those ingredients. A lot of times I know it's not a balanced diet if it's a home prepared diet. Um, so I have to be careful if it's a very young dog, if they have any other underlying medical issues. So sometimes I don't get to do a diet trial the way I'd want to. Uh, but in the perfect case, six to eight weeks, limited ingredient. And then when they come back, I always try to have a visit before, or a good phone call, before they do the diet re-challenge, which essentially confirms that during that period of time, the reason they got better was because of the diet, not, and I'll say this to clients, the phase of the moon, the weather, you know, the wind, the rain, whatever we had. So that's the only way to really eliminate the time of the year that you do the diet trial and prove that that diet trial made a difference. I think one of my frustrations is clients will come to me and they've been feeding a certain prescription food for two years. And I'm like, okay, well, did you ever re-challenge? And they'll say, well, what does that mean? Um, so some of the expense that they've been paying for a food may not be necessary and could go towards you know, treating something else or treating their environmental allergy. So in a nutshell, diet trial is a difficult and tedious task, but if done right, it can provide a lot of good information for us.